TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. United States President Donald Trump decided to apply limitations on the U.S. military's initially proposed plan of response in retaliation to the downing of an American surveillance drone by the Islamic Republic's Revolutionary Guards on Thursday. U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton, who is visiting Jerusalem for pre-scheduled trilateral summit with his Israeli and Russian counterparts, underscored that neither Iran nor any other hostile actor should mistake U.S. prudence and discretion for weakness. Iranian Parliament Deputy Speaker Masoud Pazeshkian declared that Iran will never bow down to Washington's demands while adding that the Islamic Republic will continue to advance its aspirations with full force and resist anyone who stands in its way. United States President Donald Trump decided to apply limitations on the U.S. military's initially proposed plan of response in retaliation to the downing of an American surveillance drone by the Islamic Republic's Revolutionary Guards on Thursday. According to the American leader, the proposed retaliatory strike was not proportionate to Iran's targeting of an unmanned aerial vehicle in light of a projected casualty assessment that set the approximate death toll at 150 Iranians. They came and they said, sir, we're ready to go. We'd like a decision. I said, I want to know something before you go. How many people will be killed? In this case, Iranians. Mm -hmm. I said, how many people are going to be killed? Uh, sir, I'd like to get back to you on that. Great people, these generals. They said, uh, came back, said, sir, approximately 150. And I thought about it for a second. And I said, you know what? They shot down an unmanned uh, drone, mm -hmm. plane, whatever you want to call it, and here we are sitting with 150 dead people uh, that would have taken place probably within a half an hour after I said go ahead. Yeah. And I didn't like it. I didn't think it was, I didn't think it was proportionate. Well, President Trump insisted in an exclusive interview with NBC's Meet the Press that he is not looking for war. He emphasized that if Iran would test America's patience by actively pursuing nuclear capabilities, the United States will devastate the Islamic Republic in a manner that was never seen before. Wouldn't be much different than that message. I'm not looking for war. And if there is, it'll be obliteration like you've never seen before. But I'm not looking to do that. But you can't have a nuclear weapon. Despite repeated statements with regard to Washington's reluctance to escalate the situation into an all-out war with Tehran, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo arrived in Saudi Arabia today to hold extensive talks with America's regional partners. Prior to his departure, the top American diplomat revealed that the purpose of his trip aims to establish a global coalition to confront the challenge that Iran presents. I'm heading out today. Our first stop will be in uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, uh, two great allies in the challenge that Iran presents, and we'll be talking with them about how to make sure that we are all uh, strategically aligned and how we can build out a global coalition, a coalition not only throughout the Gulf states, uh, but in Asia and in Europe that understands this challenge as it is prepared uh, to push back against the world's largest state sponsor of terror. In addition to the Trump administration's diplomatic efforts to unite the international community against the Ayatollah regime, Washington announced a new series of sanctions which took effect early this morning in efforts to further ratchet up pressure on the Islamic Republic's economy with the declared goal of denying Iran the resources to foment terror. Meanwhile in Israel, U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton, who is visiting Jerusalem for a pre-scheduled trilateral summit with his Israeli and Russian counterparts, underscored during a joint press conference with Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu that neither Iran nor any other hostile actor should mistake U.S. prudence and discretion for weakness. While contending that Washington's sanctions regime on Tehran is bearing fruit, Ambassador Bolton stressed that the military option remains on the table. Neither Iran nor any other hostile actor should mistake U.S. prudence and discretion for weakness. No one has granted them a hunting license in the Middle East. As President Trump said on Friday, our military is rebuilt, new, and ready to go, by far the best in the world. Sanctions are biting, and more added last night. 
Iran can never have nuclear weapons, not against the USA and not against the world. And as he made clear yesterday, referring to his earlier remarks, the President said, I just stri stopped the strike from going forward at this time. Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu, for his part, welcomed President Donald Trump's decision to increase the economic pressure on the Islamic Republic due to its malign activities, yet notably stopped short from criticizing the American leader's decision not to retaliate to Iran's repeated attacks against American interests in the region, including the downing of the U.S. military drone. In fact, the one thing that has changed for those of us who live in the Middle East is not that Iran is attacking its neighbors or brazenly perpetrating wanton aggression. What's new is that now, thanks to crippling American sanctions, Iran is facing unprecedented economic pressure as a result of its aggression. So I was pleased to hear President Trump make clear yesterday that pressure will continue and that pressure will increase. It is important to mention that Trump's decision not to retaliate militarily to the downing of the American drone was not particularly well received in Jerusalem. The Iranian provocations, which for the time being were not met by any palpable action by the United States, placed Israel in an uncomfortable position. While Netanyahu reportedly instructed his cabinet ministers to refrain from making any public statements about Iran, in particular regarding U.S. policy in the Persian Gulf, Israeli officials have voiced their concerns to TV7. One senior official said, on condition of anonymity, that the Trump administration's reluctance to retaliate militarily against Iran's boastful aggression created the wrongful impression within the Islamic Republic in which their continued attacks may go unanswered. The official further explained that while he understands Trump's political considerations, especially after promising not to involve the United States in yet another Middle East war, the mullahs in Tehran, who are not subject to democratic considerations, view Trump's inaction as sheer weakness. Meanwhile in Tehran, the Iranian parliament deputy speaker Masoud Pazeshkian declared following the downing of the American drone that the Islamic Republic will never bow down to Washington's demands. Pazeshkian asserted in a statement to Parliament that the Islamic Republic will continue to advance its aspirations with full force and resist anyone who stands in its way, to which a group of Iranian lawmakers responded by repeatedly chanting, Death to America. Our country will not easily bow its head in front of them and we are standing tall. America and its gang should know that our Iran will not surrender to their threats that easily and we will stand and resist as long as we live and we will continue with full force and resist. I hope that this trend will continue with unity and solidarity in our country. The chants, often repeated since the 1979 Islamic Revolution, which toppled the U.S.-backed Shah, came weeks after Trump claimed in a televised interview that the Iranians have not screamed death to America as of late. Since his statement, Iranian state television published multiple incidents of the referred to chants, including during the weekly prayer processions from Tehran's major mosque, where the regime-appointed religious cleric claimed that the Islamic Republic will turn the Strait of Hormuz into a graveyard of trespassers. The Hormuz Strait is a special area belonging to our land and has always been the graveyard of trespassers. We are the people of resistance and active deterrence. We do not start, but if you start, be sure that you are not going to be the one that finishes. If you strike once, you will be hit once, which you were, and maybe you will be hit three times, so be careful. Now to Brussels, where French President Emmanuel Macron urged the United States and Iran to exercise restraint. Speaking after a two-day summit of European Union leaders in the Belgian capital, President Macron called for the formation of an agenda vis-à-vis -vis Iran, which would enable the international community to resolve the dangerous crisis. 
The comments by President Macron came after EU leaders could not find common ground on a unified statement regarding the US-Iran standoff. Attempting to brush off the apparent discord, EU Council President Donald Tusk insisted that the decision not to intervene by issuing a statement was pragmatic and responsible. Thank you for watching us. Keep praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan, Eve Erev, Doven Shavua Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time. Hi, this is Mayan Hessen from TV7 Israel News. Like our videos? Support our cause? Enjoy learning more about the region? Want constant updates about the Middle East? Then subscribe to the TV7 Israel News YouTube channel. Make sure to also turn on the notification bell with just one simple click of a button. After subscribing to our channel, a bell icon will appear under every one of our videos. You will find the notification bell right next to the subscribe button, and all you have to do is click on the bell icon, and make sure small sound bars appear above it. This way, you'll be alerted every time we upload a new video, and thus, we'll never miss a thing. Stay tuned, and thanks for watching.